So something big happened in the Linux world. KDE Plasma 6 came out and it really sucks because I never even got a chance to do a video on Plasma 5. And not only do we have Plasma 6, but we have Plasma 6.1 and there's a bunch of changes to talk about. By the way, I'm Jay and this is DS Tech Media uh, covering everything tech but focusing on Linux and open source software. And if you find this useful, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're so inclined, please share this with a community that might find it useful. Both would help more people find the video and if you're a true G hit the subscribe button because that makes it all worthwhile and real quick uh, if you don't already know unlike with Mac OS or Windows there is no one true Linux but rather there are many Linux distributions there's a handful of main or grandfather distros and then there's a handful of desktop environments most Linux Software and apps can be installed on any distro or any desktop, but the look, feel, and user experience is defined by the desktop. And the two main desktops are GNOME or GNOME, whatever, GNOME, and KDE Plasma. And so here I'm going to try and show you everything that's new with Plasma 6 and compare KDE itself from the point of view of uh, GNOME users. And I'm going to be testing Plasma 6 on KDE Neon. KDE Neon is the official KDE distribution and it's based on Ubuntu, so it's ideal. And first off, I want to talk a little bit about my first experience with KDE. I was going out of town with my girlfriend on a camping trip. I needed to install Linux on my laptop. And so before I left, I installed Kubuntu, which is the Ubuntu flavor. And this was still Plasma 5. So I got it all set up. I left on the trip, got down to the campground. I'm in the tent. I opened up my laptop and the desktop wouldn't load. The system would post, but the desktop itself would not start and I had never had issues with Ubuntu at all so I'm fairly certain that it was a KDE specific failure. That generally just gave me a bad impression of KDE for better or worse. So what's new First off, a couple of fundamental changes that may not seem that exciting, but they are very significant. Plasma now uses Wayland as the default display server instead of X. And this is the system that handles the keyboard and mouse inputs, but also the display. The system it's replacing is Xorg or X11, and it's been part of Linux since its beginning in 1991, but a part of Unix since 1984. Wayland has lower input latency and faster performance. It means simple things like resizing windows or major things like playing games are going to run smoother than ever. X is 40 years old and has lots of security vulnerabilities, and it's no longer an active development. However, KDE will still support X for people who want to use it for the foreseeable future. Also fundamental is the update to Qt6, uh, KDE's user interface framework and the counterpart to GNOME's GTK. Qt ties into Wayland with brand new rendering pipeline that improves performance and reduces memory usage. It also brings fractional scaling to high DPI displays. And together, Wayland and QT6 in general mean KDE Plasma 6 should look better, run smoother, and feel faster than ever. Also related to this is HDR or high dynamic range support for monitors and software, which means deeper colors. And you can also implement individual ICC color profiles on a per screen basis. These are still limited to srbg color space but the kde team is working to increase the number of supported spaces soon and this might not mean anything to most people but if you work professionally with graphics photography or video editing the color calibration and space is an important so feature. one major thing that's been completely revamped is the panel it's now a floating panel which basically just means that it's no longer stuck to the edge of the screen, but it also dodges windows by default now, which is how I prefer it. Also the edit mode 
for both the desktop and the panel has been totally reworked and it's been improved dramatically. You can place the panel up against the top, bottom, left or right. You can make it stretch across the entire screen or expand based on windows and applications you have open. You can make it translucent, opaque or adaptive and you can even add widgets. And unlike GNOME, KDE comes loaded with hidden options and customizations out of the box. So not only can we change the panel, but we can add widgets and plasmoids to it or the desktop. And they even have things I can actually use like this color dropper. Since I do design work, I can use this to build a palette from things online or wherever. The genome team should be forced to attend a KDE seminar or something because this is how a system tray should work. I've mentioned this before in videos, but weather is the first thing I add to any new operating system and in genome if you want the current temperature as an icon in your panel you have to install a genome extension kde includes a weather report widget and you can drag it to wherever you want even the tray the next thing i would install is a clipboard manager and kde includes one by default out of the box right there in the system tray KDE's clipboard manager also has features like configurable actions and in the clipboard configuration I discovered KDE actually has a sort of second or more temporary clipboard. If you highlight something like text and simply middle click with your mouse it can paste what you highlighted without ever having actually copied it to the clipboard. But the coolest clipboard feature is the QR codes which you can then scan from your phone and have that particular text item from the clipboard manager synced up with your phone's clipboard which is just awesome. But wait, there's even more. You click the little chevron and it expands to show you a dedicated notification section that remembers your notifications. Access to KDE Connect for your phone integration. Power management options for laptops. Display configuration and vaults, which are password protected folders that actually encrypt file system volumes mounted when you unlock them. But if we go to the panel edit mode, the tray has its own preferences that lets you show and hide the individual items or set them to appear when relevant. Kind of how the Windows system tray works. The plasma system tray simply puts the genome shell tray to shame. Another thing I absolutely love about plasma is the built-in zoom. Kind of like on Mac OS. Simply Clicking the meta key and plus or minus zooms in or out on your display with your cursor as the focal point. Pretty cool. Alt space opens KRunner, KDE's universal search and run utility that can run apps you have installed or find apps available for install, as well as files and folders on your system. It's now claimed to have 200% faster searching of documents. 60% faster searching of applications, all while using 30% less CPU cycles. It's also loaded with plugins like converting units of currency, a calculator, a dictionary, and a spell checker. It can search the bookmarks from your browsers, open or kill applications, and you can get other plugins to expand KRunner. Even sort the plugins to change which results show up first, and KRunner can show your search history, or forget it if that's what you prefer. Plasma Search uses indexing of your file system, and so you can specify directories to index or to ignore. It can even index hidden files if you want it to. And KRunner on its own is an awesome reason to use Plasma. Pressing the Windows or Meta key and W brings up the new and improved overview feature which has been redesigned for Plasma 6. It actually looks a lot like the way GNOME's overview mode does with the small workspaces at the top and the tile view of your open applications on your current workspace. You can even drag them up to the top to move them to another workspace. Meta plus G brings up the older grid view which I actually prefer for managing the windows and desktops but what's even better is because it's KDE you can configure this as well and I like adding a second row because it makes the widget in the panel take up less space and it just looks cooler to be honest. So we get the new overview but also an old favorite is back, the cube. 
and to enable it you go to settings window management desktop effects and find cube and enable it as the name implies this lets you manage your virtual desktops as a cube you can even change the color of the background or set it to skybox skybox is a term used in older games for how you get the sky and the far background i tested it with a few wallpapers which show the dividing line but i'm sure i could get creative and make something better and this was actually really popular back in the day it was basically a way linux guys could show off to windows and mac os users however i should also note that right from the start i had some issues with the cube on plasma 6 it would just stop coming up and I'd have to disable it and re-enable it to get it back. So this is strike one. There's also been a bunch of changes to default settings, such as single click no longer opens folders in the file manager. It's now double click like the rest of the civilized world. The alt tab switcher is more familiar and similar to Windows. Gone are the days of the side panel. The mouse scroll wheel no longer cycles through virtual desktops, which was always insane and I'm sure confused people who weren't familiar with virtual desktops. But if you prefer the way it used to be, you can always switch it back. Also, the settings app has been overhauled to make it simpler to find what you're looking for. And with Plasma 6 under remote desktop, we have the brand new KRDP server settings. KDE's new remote desktop protocol. Most Linux desktops include VNC. RDP is known for better performance and better security. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it to work and it seems that a lot of other people were having problems as well, but I only tested it using the Remina RDP client included with Ubuntu. I'm not sure why you would ship this if it's not working. Please let me know if you've had any luck with this. Another cool feature in settings, tucked away within the default applications. So here we can set our default apps, uh, web browsers, Firefox, email, Kmail, phone numbers, KDE Connect, image viewers, Gwen View, music and videos, VLC, Kate's our text editor, Ocular for PDFs, Dolphin File Manager, console is the terminal, and Arc for archives. And then down here there's OpenStreetMap, and we can even switch that to some others as well. So this is already more comprehensive than other default application dialogues, but the interesting part is the little icons next to VLC and Kate. This opens up a new centralized file associations. In times past, you'd right click a file in your file manager and set the opens with, but here you can assign them per file or MIME type. So if we wanted to open MP3s with a different application than FLAC files, we can set that here. Any file type can be set to its own specific application, all from right here in KDE settings. And this is a brilliant feature for someone like myself who deals with lots of image, video, and audio files and lots of different applications. Another new addition is the Scarlet Tree dynamic wallpaper that automatically transitions with the sunrise or sunset or even just the light and dark theme. KDE has a few of these, but the Scarlet Tree is new in Plasma 6. Also new is the Ocean sound theme, which is a welcome change over the old oxygen sounds we've heard for years now. Something that's not new to Plasma 6 is KDE Plasma is by far the most customizable system, more so than macOS, Windows, or the other Linux desktops. With Genome, you can customize a lot, but you need to download the Tweaks app or install individual extensions and on top of that you have to seek out the themes icon sets and etc from websites like genome look but with kde you can adjust or change just about any aspect of the operating system directly from within kde settings you can download entire themes or customize the colors window widget style icons the cursors all throughout the OS, you'll find options to modify that specific piece of the system or even download alternatives and extensions. And a single click gives you access to what feels like an unlimited supply of each. 
but here are a few themes that I thought looked cool so I tried them out. This has always been KDE's claim to fame. If I were to even attempt to show you every feature packed into KDE, it would literally take hours. KDE's settings includes lots of other things for the OS in a central location, such as testing and configuring game controllers. Here I hooked up my PS5 controller and I was able to see it working immediately. Then there's KDE Connect, which lets you integrate your phone with KDE Plasma. KDE even includes a centralized spell check built right in. Another core feature of Plasma is activities. Uh, this isn't new, but if I'm trying to sell you on Plasma, I have to mention it. While workspaces are virtual desktops allowing you to switch different groups of windows, activities are the entire desktop that you can switch between with different backgrounds, widgets, and layouts. Here I set one up called music and maybe I have all of my music making tools in this activity. You can enable and disable them when you need them and there's lots of interesting use cases. Spectacle is KDE's screenshot tool and it now allows you to record video of the entire screen, a specific window, or even a specific area of your choosing. And it places a recording indicator in the panel tray that lets you know how long the recording is. Clicking it also ends the recording now. You can record in MP4 with H.264 codec or WebM with the VP9. Unfortunately, I also experienced some issues while testing Spectacle. The window record and rectangle select record would always fail when I was trying to record them as MP4s and they always worked fine with VP9. I found some other people had reported this bug, so I'm assuming this will be fixed pretty soon. And Spectacle's screenshot side has a ton of options for annotating, highlighting, listing, and marking up screenshots. It's a perfect tool for doing tutorials. Dolphin is Plasma's file manager, totally loaded up with options. If you open the preferences, there's a dozen tabs and pages to go through, in contrast with Nautilus, which has like a single dialogue. But new is some of the context menus have been redesigned with accessibility in mind. And there's a new right click option that lets you open a folder in split view. One interesting feature is the details panel can play entire videos or audio files, meaning you can find and compare video clips without having to open VLC. And I'm not even going to open VLC because everyone should know what it is, but it is also insanely feature rich. Gwenview is KDE's image viewer and photo manager. It has basic editing and organization tools like tagging, making it an alternative to Genome's Shotwell. But one thing I found particularly cool is the share feature, which includes options for Imager, Google Drive, email, Nextcloud, send via Bluetooth and send to a device. The beautiful thing is you can upload to Imager without any configuration or credentials whatsoever. It just gives you a link to the photo you uploaded and that's all there is to it. It's perfect. It even gives you a link to follow if you want to remove an image that you uploaded. KDE's contact suite received a bunch of improvements related to security and privacy, particularly encryption and signing or verifying files and messages. Just for clarity, these do not come pre-installed with Plasma 6, but I had to install these apps manually. Contact is KDE's personal information manager. It's their counterpart to the Evolution data server on Genome. It brings together K address book, K mail, K notes, K organizer, and others all in one application. Cleopatra is the front end for GNU GPG encryption, and it now lets you view encrypted emails downloaded from web clients like Gmail, which don't support OpenPGP. Kmail now removes ads and tracking code from your emails using a more powerful ad blocker written in Rust. The email composer now directly shows the validity and trust level of the open PGP keys of your recipients and warns you when one of their keys is almost or currently expired. 
Also, Kmail now supports a few offline and open source AI features, such as translations that can be configured to use the Bergamot translation model, which is also used by Firefox. It can also use the Vosk API engine to convert speech to text. And I've actually tested the Vosk API in Caden Live to generate subtitles and it works quite well. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my Gmail accounts to work with Kmail, and Lord knows I tried. I was able to set the permissions for it in Gmail, but still Kmail refused to connect to my account. This process is super easy in Genome because you just sign into your Google account in the online account section of settings and all of your email clients pick up the credentials from there. But for some reason, I could not get my Gmail integrated with KDE. I know there's a way to get this to work, but it shouldn't be this difficult. I'm not a newcomer to Linux. If you have any idea what I'm doing wrong, please leave a comment. K Organizer is the calendars and events component, and it now allows you to send encrypted and signed email invitations, which is an absolute must have if your work requires confidentiality. It sucks that I couldn't get Kmail to work because it actually has more features and options than either of the email clients that I use, which are Geary and Evolution, if you're wondering. The contact suite and the individual apps are loaded with what seems like professional features, and I'm sure there are people out there using them successfully. Kate is Plasma's text editor and integrated development environment, which includes a language server protocol or LSP, which might interest you if you're a web or software developer. The LSP allows the integration of stuff like code completion, jumps to definition, symbol search, and more into an application for each language one wants to support. And Kate's improved LSP for Plasma 6 uses a new JSON parser called Rapid JSON, now returns completion results with more speed and less memory used. LSP support is now more complete and will display dialogues when the server asks for them. So, a few other apps that are mentioned in the Mega Release 6. NeoChat is KDE's Matrix client. Uh, Matrix is a encrypted communication protocol and the new version gains management for multiple accounts and now lets you register a new Matrix account directly from within the app itself. It will also let you deactivate existing accounts. I do not have a Matrix account and it's sort of a niche application so I figure if you know, you know. I'm not gonna set one up. Tokadon is KDE's Mastodon Fediverse app. It's been redesigned with more features including the ability to hide boosts and replies from your timeline. And there's been several other improvements. You can also leave comments when you report an offending account. PlasmaTube is a YouTube client using NVIDIAS, an alternative front end to YouTube. And this new version supports syncing your watch history with your NVIDIAS account and searching for channels and playlists. It also comes with a new queue system for the playlists. And PlasmaTube 2402 introduces picture in picture mode, which allows you to watch videos in a floating window that stays on top of all the others. It also added support for videos from PeerTube and Piped as well. And then we have Caden Live. Caden Live isn't included with KDE Plasma, but it is probably their flagship application. It's also the editor that I'll be editing this video with. It has of course been updated to QT6 and has lots of powerful upgrades under the hood, including a reworked dialogue for missing files from the project. You can now export audio to an external editor and replace the audio in the timeline seamlessly. Then there's a new drop down menu in the clip monitor that shows all your recently viewed clips, meaning you can easily jump between them, which is perfect when comparing clips or trying to plan out different sections prior to entering them into the timeline. Also, you can now add multiple subtitles to a singular subtitle track rather than needing to add multiple tracks for each subtitle. But most impressive is the new interpolation methods for keyframes and new toggles for clips and effects. 
Plasma's system monitor is also noteworthy because it's fully configurable. It comes with four pages, overview, applications, processes, and history. And in perfect KDE fashion, you can configure your own pages or download more. Also, I'd like to note the 2.3 gigabytes of RAM used with only the terminal and the system monitor open doesn't exactly make KDE a lightweight desktop system. As I'm editing this video, KDE 6.2 was released and it includes another new wallpaper, a metric ton of fixes and improvements. And yes, this is just a change log between 6.1 and 6.2. However, if you're running Linux kernel 6.11, Plasma 6.2 brings support for a number of low cost drawing tablets plus new options for stylus and pen bindings. In the drawing tablets section of settings, you'll find a tablet calibration wizard and test mode, and a feature for defining the area of the screen your tablet controls, whether the whole thing or just a section. Despite my first negative experience with KDE, there's a lot that I like about KDE today, and you know, it's been years ago since the camping accident. Uh, it looks a lot more modern and it looks a lot more professional than GNOME. The default GNOME shell at this point kind of looks like it's made for children, like a kid's tablet or something. And with Plasma, you can change everything and configure everything without installing any additional software whatsoever. And that's a pretty awesome feature. But my favorite thing is probably the new edit mode. It opens faster and works better than it ever did before. And so there you have it. This is, that was KDE Plasma 6 running in KDE Neon. Uh, there's a lot to like. Uh, it's a very, it has a lot more to offer out of the box than GNOME does, uh, for sure, without a doubt. That's not even disputable. And I am a long time GNOME user. Um, it's kind of hard to get me away from GNOME Shell just because of that, but I could definitely see myself using KDE Plasma 6. Uh, there's just a lot to like. The activities, KDE has always had a lot of features over the competition. You know, like the activities, all of the configurations and whatnot, but it's improved enough that I feel like I could easily see myself giving it a chance for daily work. But what are your thoughts? Uh, do you use KDE? Have you had any of the issues that I've had? Let me know in the comments section down below. And Arlo says hello. By the way, Genome 47 is out now and I might have to do a video about that. Let me know if you'd like to see that below. As always, thank you for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Jay, this is DS Tech Media, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.